Mario, let's start. The fan, the emeralds. Very well, Madame. All oh, Madame's jewels. Put them out and I shall choose. And of course, my patent leather shoes. The ones that you had your eyes on for years. For your wedding, no doubt. Admit he seduced you. Just look at you, how big you are. Oh, with don't spit, Claire. I told you. Let it sleep in you, my child. Let it stagnate. Uh, may the lost wafer drown in it. Uh, you hideous. Lean forward and look at yourself in my shoes. Do you think I find it pleasant to know that my foot is shrouded in veils of your saliva? In the mists of your swamps? I wish Madame to be lovely. I shall be. You hate me, don't you? You crush me with your attentions and your humbleness. You smother me with your gladioli and mimosa. This room is needlessly cluttered. There's too many flowers. It's impossible. I shall be lovely, lovelier than you'll ever be. With a face and body like that, you'll never seduce Mario. A ridiculous young milkman despises us. And if we're to have a kid by him... Oh, but I've never! Get my dress! The red dress. Madame will wear the red dress this I evening. I said the white dress, the one with the spangles. I'm sorry. Madame will wear the scarlet velvet dress this evening. A why? It's impossible to forget Madame's bosom under the velvet folds. And the jet brush, when Madame was sighing and telling Monsieur of my devotion. Your widowhood really requires that she be entirely in black. Eh? Need I say more? A word to the wise. Oh, so you want to talk? Very well, threaten me. Insult your mistress, Solange. You probably wanted to speak about Monsieur's misfortunes. Fool! It was hardly the moment to allude to him. But I can turn it into a fine account. <laughs> You're smiling. Do you doubt it? The time is not yet ripe to an earth. <laughs> what a word. <laughs> to an earth. I get your dress ready. I don't hate you, you know. I love you. Oh. I'm so alone and friendless. You don't care what happens to me. Oh. I can see in your eyes that you loathe me. Oh. I love you. I adore you. And you love me and you respect me as one loves a mistress. And you're hoping for a legacy, a codicil in your favor. I will do all in my power. Mm, I don't doubt it. Fasten it! And don't pull so hard. Try to avoid pulling me. You smell like an animal. 
to bring those odors from some foul attic where the lackeys visit us at night. The maid's room, the garret. <laughs> Claire, uh, if I speak of the smell of garrets, it's for the memory's sake. And of the two sisters that fall asleep, dreaming of one another. There, there, and the two iron beds with the table between them. There, the iron dresser with a little altar to the Holy Virgin. That's right, isn't it? You're so unhappy. I'm going to cry if you go on. Oh, it is right, isn't it? Let's skip the business of your kneeling and prayers and I'm not even going to mention the paper flowers. <laughs> <laughs> the paper flowers and the branch of holly boxwood. <sighs> Look at these flowers open in my honour. Claire, am I not a lovelier virgin? Be quiet. <laughs> and there, and that notorious skylight through which a half-naked milkman jumps into your bed. Madame is forgetting herself, madame. And you? Aren't you forgetting your hands? How many times have I murmured? They befoul the sink. The all. Hey? The fall of your dress, I'm arranging your fall from grace. Get away, you bungler! <gasps> Me a bungler! <laughs> I said a bungler. And if you must whimper, do it in your garret. Here, in my bedroom, I'll only have noble tears. And they will come when the hem of my dress will be studded with them. But those will only be precious tears. Arrange my train, you clog. Madame has been carried away. <laughs> By the devil. He carries me away in his fragrant arms. He lifts me up, I leave the ground, and I'm off! <gasps> and I stay behind. Get my necklace. The dress is too long, make a hem with some safety pins. Oh. Get your hands off mine! I can't stand you touching me! There's no need to overdo it. Your eyes are all ablazed. <laughs> What's that you said? Limits, boundaries, madame. Frontiers are not conventions, but laws. Here, my land, there, your shore. What language, my dear. Claire, uh, do you mean that I've already crossed the seas? Are you offering me the dreary exile of your imagination? You're taking revenge, aren't you? You can feel the time coming when no longer a maid. You see straight through me, you divide my thought. When no longer a maid, you become vengeance itself. But don't forget, Claire. Claire, are you listening? <sighs> it was the maid who hatched the schemes of vengeance. And I... Claire, oh, you're not listening! I'm listening! <sighs> and I am both vengeance and a maid. I give them both a chance for life, a chance for salvation. Claire, it's a burden. It's terribly painful to be a mistress, to be the dunghill on which you grow, to contain all the springs of hatred. You want to see me naked every day. I am beautiful, am I not? But the desperation of my love makes me even more so. And you have no idea what strength I need. Your lover. Oh. My unhappy lover only heightens my nobility. Yes, yes, my child. All that you'll ever know is your own baseness. That ought to. No, hurry, are you ready? Are you? I'm ready. I'm tired of being an object of disgust. I hate you. I despise you. I hate your scented bosom, your ivory bosom, your golden thighs, your amber feet. I hate you. <laughs> yes, my proud beauty. You think you can always do just as you like. You think you can deprive me forever of the beauty of the sky. That you can choose your perfumes and powders and nail polish and velvet and silk and lace and deprive me of them. That you can steal the milkman from me. <laughs> Admit about the milkman. Admit it. His youth and vigor excite you, don't they? Admit about the milkman, for Solange says to hell with you! Claire, Claire, ah? 
Claire is here. Claire, Claire. And Claire says, to hell with you. Claire is here, more dazzling than ever. Radiant. Oh! <laughs> Madame thought she was protected by her barricade of flowers, saved by some special destiny, by her sacrifice. But she reckoned without a maid's rebellion. Behold the wrath, madame. She will turn your speeches to naught. She will cut the ground from under your fine adventures. Your mercy was just a cheap thief, and I, you? I forbid you. Confound your impudent. Oh, she forbids me. It's madame who's confounded. Her face is all convulsed. Would you like a mirror? Hey, uh, I can see the marks of a slap. But I'm more beautiful than ever. <laughs> Slap, yes. <laughs> Danger is my halo, Claire. And you, you dwell in darkness. Well, darkness is dangerous, I know. I've heard of that before. I can tell by your face what I'm supposed to answer. So I finish it up. Here are the two maids, the faithful servants. Despise them. Look more beautiful. We no longer fear you. We are merged. Enveloped in our fumes, in our revels, in our hatred of you. The mood is setting. You're taking shame. <laughs> don't laugh. Don't laugh above all. Don't laugh at my eloquence. Get out! But only to be of further service to Madame. I'm going back to my kitchen, back to my gloves, and to the smell of my teeth, to my belching sink. You have your flowers. I my sink. I'm the maid. You. At least you can't defy me. But, but, but before I go back, I'm going to finish my job. Come, Harry, help me. The it's same over thing over happens Andy. every time. You didn't even get yeah. to the end. And it's all your fault. You're never ready. I can't finish you all. Oh. We waste too much time yeah. with the preliminaries. Yeah. But I still... Yeah. <laughs> Watch out the window. Uh. Watch out the window! <sighs> so close today. It was close all day. Yes. Is that what's killing us, Claire? Yes. <sighs> it's time now. Yes, I'm going to make the tea. See, looking at yourself, Claire, dear. Huh? Let me alone, I'm finished. Thanks to you, the whole place is in a mess again. And I've got to clean Madame's gowns. Well, what's the matter with you? You can be like me now. Mm. You can be yourself. Let me alone, I'm exhausted. The light is killing me. Do you think the people opposite? Oh, who cares? Don't expect us to organize things in the dark. Have some rest. Shut your eyes. Shut your eyes, Claire! Oh, when I say I'm exhausted, it's just a way of talking. Don't use it to beat me and stop trying to dominate me. I never tried to dominate you. It's just that you will help me more by resting. Mm -hmm. I understand. Don't explain. I will explain. It was you who started when you mentioned that man. If Mario, ah. if the milkman says indecent things to me, he does to you too. But you love the mingling. Oh, you better watch if everything is in order. Look, the key to the secretary was like this. You and as have you said, mingling your insults. He always finds maids' hairs all over the pinks and roses. And things about our private life with the... With the... With the... With what? Go on. Say it. Name it. The ceremony. <laughs> Besides, we don't have time for a discussion now. She'll be back, back, back. But Solange, this time we've got her. I envy you. <laughs> I wish I could have seen the expression on her face when she heard about her lover's arrest. <laughs> you have to admit it, for the first time in my life I've done a good job. 
If it wasn't for me, if it wasn't for my anonymous letters, you would have missed the pretty sight. I love her handcuff and Madame in tears. <laughs> <laughs> it's enough to kill her. This morning she could hardly stand up. Fine, she can drop dead and I inherit. Enough to have to set foot again in that filthy garret with those two idiots, that cook and that butler. I really like the hard garret. Just to contradict me. Don't start getting sentimental about it. I loathe it. And I see as it really eats. Bare and mean and shabby. But what a bit. We are just scum. Oh, let me talk. Let me get it out of my system. I liked the garret because it was plain and I didn't have to put on a show. No hangings to push aside, no rug to shake, no furniture to caress with my eyes or with a rug. Nothing forced us to make pretty gestures. Don't worry, you'll be able to go on playing queen, playing at Marie Antoinette, strolling about the apartment at night. You're mad. I've never strolled about the apartment. Oh no, never. Madame has never gone strolling. Wrapped in the curtain or in the lace bed cover. At two in the morning, strutting on the balcony, greeting the populace who has turned out to parade beneath her windows. No, never. Oh, never. That's so long. It's too dark to spy on Madame and you thought you were invisible on your balcony. What do you take me for? Don't tell me that you were in your sleep. At the stage we've reached, you can admit it. I'm so large, you're shouting. Please, please, lower your tone. Madame can come in any minute. It's all right. Ow! Let go of the curtains. Let go of them. I can't stand the way you lift them. It upsets me. That's how Monsieur did it. When he was spying on the police the morning, he, he was arrested. So you're scared now. The slightest gesture makes you feel like a murderer. Trying to get away by the service stairway. Go on, be sarcastic. Work me on. Go on, be sarcastic. <laughs> Nobody loves me. Nobody loves <coughs> us. She does. Uh, she loves us. She's kind. Madame is kind. She adores us. Yeah. She loves us the way she likes her armchair. Not even that much. Like her bed, rather. Like her pink enamel toilet seat. And we, we can't love one another. Filth. Doesn't love filth. Do you think that I'm going to put up with it? That I'm going to keep playing the game and that at night go back to my folding cot? The game. Will we even be able to go on with it? <coughs> and if I have to stop spitting on someone who calls me Claire, I'll simply choke. My spurt of saliva will be my spray of diamonds. <laughs> oh, please, please, speak oh. more softly. Speak. Speak of Madame's kindness. Ah, kindness, is it? It's easy to be kind and smiling and sweet. But sweetness of hers, when you're rich and beautiful. But what if you're only made? Huh? The best that you can do is to give yourself airs while you do the washing or the cleaning. You twirl a feather dust like a fan. <coughs> you make pretty <coughs> gestures with a dishcloth. Or like you, you treat yourself to historical parades in Madame's apartment. Oh, Solange, you're starting again. What are you trying to do? Oh. If you talk like that, we're never going to calm down. Oh. If I wanted, I could say a thing or two about you. You? You? Yes, me. If I wanted to. Because after all... Oh? <coughs> after all? Why are you insinuating? It was you who started when you mentioned that man, Claire. I hate you. Same to you, and more. But if I wanted to provoke <coughs> you, I wouldn't have to use the milkman as an excuse. I've got something better on you, and you know it. Who's going to get the better of who, huh? Well, say something. Go on, you hit first. You are the one who is backing out so large. You don't dare accuse me of the worst. My letters, pages and pages of them. The whole garage was filled with them. I invented the most fantastic stories and you used them for your own purposes. You frittered away my frenzy. 
Even yesterday, when you were madame, I could see in your face how delighted you were at the opportunity they gave you to stow away on the La Martiniere in the company of your lover. Claire, to flee France, to Devil's Island, to Guiana. You were so happy to sacrifice yourself, to be the prostitute at the feet of the thief and to bear his cross, to take his place in the galley, to wipe his face. <laughs> and you felt yourself growing. Your brow rose higher than mine. It rose above the palm tree. And what about you? Just before, when you were talking about following him. All right, I don't deny it. I picked up where you left off, <laughs> but with less violence than you. Even in the garret, among all the letters, you started swaying back and forth with the pitching of the boat. <laughs> you didn't see yourself. I did. I'm more sensible than you. You're the one who concocted the story. <coughs> Turn your head. <coughs> you should see yourself so long. Your face is still lit up by the sun setting through the virgin forest. You're planning his escape. You certainly do work yourself up. But don't let it worry you. It would be cruel to disturb your blissful voyage. I'm not afraid of I have something better on you, and you know what it is. Oh, you know what? I know that you have ate me, and that you're a sneak. But be careful now. I'm older than you. So what? Older and stronger too. You're trying to put me off by talking about that man. You think I haven't found you out? You tried to kill her. Are you accusing me? Don't deny it. I saw you. And I was frightened. Frightened so long, because through her you are aiming at me. I'm the one who is in danger. When we finish our ceremony, I'll protect my neck. You'd have been the first to turn me over to the police, you, yes, you! Solange! What are you afraid of? It's my concern. Solange, my little sister, she will be back soon. I didn't kill anyone. I was a coward, you realize? I did the best I could. But she turned over in her sleep. She was breathing softly. She swelled over the sheets. It wasn't Madame. Now you want to stop me. You wanted to know more, didn't you? Well, I've got some more to tell you. I'm going to show you what your sister is made of. What stuff she's really made of. What a real servant girl she is. I wanted to strangle her. Oh, please think of what comes after. <laughs> Nothing comes after. I'm sick and tired of kneeling in pews. <laughs> in church, I'd have had the red velvet of the abbesses. Or the stone of the penitence, but at least my bearing would have been noble. Look, just look at how she suffers. How she suffers in beauty. Grief transfigures her, doesn't it? Beautifies her. When she learned that the lover was a thief, she exulted. She stood up to the police. Now she's forlorn and splendid, supported under each arm by two faithful servants whose hearts bleed to see her grief. Did you see her, her grief, sparkling with the glint of her jewels, with the satin of her gowns, in the glow of the chandelier? Claire, I wanted to make up for the poverty of my grief 
by the splendor of my crime. Afterwards, I'd have set fire to Valhalla. Oh, please, Valhalla, calm down. The fire might not have caught you, would have been found out. Do you know what happens to incendiary? I know everything. I kept my eyes and ears to the keyhole. No servants ever listened to the doors as I did. Incendiary. It's a splendid fire. Please be quiet. It's stifling. I'm stifling. You're stifling me. Let's get somewhere. Get away from the window. Go open the end room and the kitchen doors. And go check whether the water is boiling. All alone? All right, let's wait until she comes back. She will bring the stars and sighs and her tears and sighs. She will corrupt us with her sweetness. Inform Madame. Madame will be overjoyed to know that Monsieur is free. Very well, Monsieur. Goodbye, Monsieur. Is he out? And the judge let him out on bail. Why you did a fine job. Your denunciations, your letters. It worked out beautifully. And if they recognize your handwriting, it will be perfect. Please, please don't overwhelm me. And if you're so clever, you should have managed your business with Madame. She you were scared. The air was thick with perfume. It was night. Oh, it was Madame. Now we have to carry on with the same kind of life. With the same old game. But you poor wretch, even the game is dangerous. She, she walks about in her tamed menagerie. She unravels the clues. She points to our traces with the tip of her pink toe. She discovers us one by one. And it's all your fault. We've lost everything because you lack strength. I can still find whatever strength I need. Where? Where? You've been outstripped by me. You don't live above the treetops. Even the milkman running to your mind gets you all flustered. It was because I couldn't see her face, Claire. Because I was so close to Madame, so close to her sleep. But in order to get at her thought, I'd have had to lift the sheets from her heaving bosom. The sheets were warm, the night was dark. It was Madame. This kind of thing has to be done in broad daylight. You're incapable of it. It's too terrible, Lady. But I can manage it. Claire. Where you watched it, I'll succeed. Claire, don't be rash. Don't get carried away. What makes you think I'm rash? First of all, don't mix your hairpins up with mine. All right. Mix it all up, mix your rags with my tatters, mix it all up so it all stinks of the mates. So that monsieur won't have any trouble discovering us. And we'll die in the flood of shame. I'm capable of anything, you know. A sleeping pills. Yes. Let's stop calling. I am strong. You try to dominate me. I never tried to. Uh, I know what I'm talking about. I made up my mind. I'm ready. I'm tired of it all. I'm tired of being the spider, the umbrella case, the shabby godless nun without a family. I'm tired of having a stone for an altar. I am that disagreeable, sullen, smelly girl. To you too. Claire, we're both nervous. Yes, madame. I can't stand it anymore either. I can't stand our being so alive. I can't stand my hands. I can't stand my black stockings. I can't stand my hair. I'm not reproaching you or anything, my dear sister. I understand that your strolling about the apartment helped you. Is the strength. Stop it. I want to help you. I want to comfort you. 
and I know I disgust you, that I'm repulsive to you. And I know because you disgust me too. <laughs> when slaves love one another, that's not love. And I am tired of having my image thrown back at me like a mirror, like a bad smell. You are my bad smell. No, I shall have my crown and I shall stroll about the apartment. That's not reason enough to kill her. Uh, really? Why, please? Where and when can we find a better excuse? So it's not enough, eh? It's not enough to be raped by a milkman blindly going through our garrets. Madame will witness our shame tonight bursting with laughter, laughing until tears roll down her sides. No. I shall have my crown. I shall be the poisoner that you failed to be. It's my turn to dominate you. But I never tried to dominate you. Hand me the towels, hand me the clothes, please rub the floor, scrape the carrots, scrub the floors. It's over. Over! Oh, I almost forgot. Turn the top off! It's over! I'll run the world. My little sister, can you help me? You want to know what gestures to make? Things are more serious, Claire, and simpler too. We've read the story of the sister Holy Cross from the Blessed Valley. The one that poisoned 27 Arabs? <laughs> she walked bare feet, her feet all stiff. <laughs> she was lifted up, carried off to the crime. We've read the story of Princess Albanares, the one who caused death of her husband and her lover. She uncorked the bottle, made a big gesture of the cross over the goblet. And when she stood before the corpses, she saw nothing but death. And far away in the distance, a fleet image of herself being carried off by the wind. In the book about the Marquisa de Venosa, the one who poisoned her children, we're being told that as she approached the corpses, her arms were supported by the ghost of her lover. My dear angel and her sister, I'll be supported by the sturdy arms of a milkman. I'll lean my left hand round his neck, he won't flinch. And you, Sanosh, you, if we have to go far away, maybe even to the Devil's Island, you'll come with me, you'll board the boat. The flight you're planning for him can be used for me. And we will be the eternal couple salon, the two of us, the eternal couple of the criminal and the saint. We'll be safe salon. Come, you're going to bed. I carry you upstairs. Oh, please turn the lights out. Turn them out. Uh, rest, rest, my little sister. Be calm. I'm ashamed, Solo. Shh, don't talk. Leave things to me. I'm going to put you to bed, and when you fall asleep, I will undress you and will carry you upstairs to the garret. And I will put you into your little cot. I'll be here. Rest. I'm ashamed, Solo. Shh. Let me tell a story. Solange? My dear sister. Solange, listen. Shh. Solange. You've got such lovely hair. <laughs> such lovely hair. Hers is... Don't talk about her anymore. Hers is false. It's a lot. Yes. Do you remember? Just the two of us under the tree. Our feet in the sun. It's a lot. Shh. Have some rest. Don't talk. Sleep. I'm here. I'm your big sister. No! No weakness! Put the light on! Quick! Put them on! It's the greater moment! <laughs> we shall eat to be strong! <laughs> Can't you advise me? What's in the kitchen, eh? Nefano Barbito! I'm exhausted. Nefano Barbito, yes. Nefano Barbito! Don't make such a face! We should be joyous and sing! <laughs> no way we'll sing when we go begging in the courts and embassies! <laughs> and laugh! <laughs> <laughs> because otherwise it will be so tragic. We're gonna go flying through the window. Shut the window. <laughs> Murder is a thing that's unspeakable. Let's say. 
by the light of the moon. Our flowered bed, and at night we'll water her toes with a little hot sauce. <laughs> 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 you sure that you didn't go through with it? How many do we need? About ten. Put ten pills into her tea. Will you do it? Yes, I've got it in my pocket. Oh, there is no end to it. Oh, such horrible gladioli. Such a sickly pink. And mimosa. Oh, they probably harm to the market before dawn to get them cheaper. But I wasn't too cold. Oh, yes, Solange. I was very cold. I've been trailing through corridors all night long. I've been seeing frozen men and stony faces. But I did manage to catch a glimpse of Monsieur. From a distance, I waved to him. I've only just left the wife of a magistrate. Uh, she's preparing Madame's tea. Oh, I wish she'd hurry. I'm ashamed to ask for you and Monsieur is all alone. Without a thing, without food, without cigarettes. But Monsieur won't stay there long. They see right away that he's not guilty. Oh, guilty or not, I shall never desert him. Never. You see, Solange, it's at times like this when you realize how much you love someone. Well, I don't think he's guilty either, but if he were, I'd become his accomplice. I'd follow him to Devil's Island, to Siberia. <laughs> There's no need to get panicking. I've seen worse cases acquitted. There was this trial murder. Uh, do you go to trials, you? I read the crime news. It was about a man who... Oh, you can't compare Monsieur's case. He's been accused of the most idiotic death. <laughs> I'm sure he will get out of it. All I mean is that, as a result of this preposterous affair, I've come to realize how deeply attached I am to him. Of course, none of this is serious, but if it were Solange, it would be a joy for me to bear his cross. I'd follow him from place to place, from prison to prison, on foot, if need be, as far as the penal colony. <laughs> they wouldn't allow you, only Bandit's wives or sisters or daughters are allowed to follow them. A condemned man is no longer a bandit. And then <laughs> I'd force my way in, past the guards, and Solange, I'd be utterly fearless. I'd use them. my weapons, what do you take me for? <laughs> She mustn't get such ideas into her head. You must rest. I'm not tired. You treat me like an invalid. You're always ready to cuddle me and pamper me as if I were dying. Thank God I've got my wits about me. I'm ready for the fight. Oh, don't come. <laughs> don't make such a face. All right, it's true. There are times when you're so sweet that I simply can't stand it. It crushes me, stifles me, and those flowers which are there for the very opposite of a celebration. If Madame means that we lack discretion. Oh. But I didn't mean anything of the kind, my dear girl. It's just that I am so upset. You see what a state I'm in. Account. Oh, you certainly picked the right time. You must be mad. Do you think I could look at figures now? Show them to me tomorrow. The lining is torn. I'll carry it to the fire tomorrow. If you like, though it's hardly worthwhile. I'm giving up my wardrobe. Besides, I'm an old woman. Oh, there go those gloomy ideas again. I'm thinking of going into mourning. 
Don't be surprised if I do. How can I lead a worldly life when Monsieur is in prison? If you find the house too sad. He would never desert, madame. Oh, yes, I know you want Solange. You've not been too unhappy with me, have you? Oh. When you needed anything, I saw that you got it. With my old gowns alone, you, you both would have dressed like princesses. Besides, of what use will they be to me? I'm through with finery and all that about it. <laughs> the tea is ready. Farewell to parties and dances and the theater. You'll inherit all that. <laughs> Madame is losing her self-control. She must pull herself together. The tea is ready. I'll put it down. I'm going to bed. It's all over. Oh, my lovely fascination, the loveliest of them all. <laughs> it was designed for me by Chanel, especially. <laughs> Here, you might have it. It's yours. Uh, for me. Of course, I said so, didn't I? <laughs> you may thank, madame. You've been admiring it so long. It's so beautiful. I'll never dare wear it. Oh, you can have it all, Ted. There is enough velvet in the tray alone for the sleeves. And for you, Solange, I'm going to give you... What shall I give you? <laughs> Here. This coat. A fur cape. Ah, oh, that is too... Oh. Madame is too coming. <laughs> no, no, don't thank me. It's such a pleasure to make people happy. Now I'm going to get undressed. Who left the receiver off? It was Monsieur. What do you mean, Monsieur? S speak up! Well, Monsieur uh, rang up. What are you talking about? Monsieur found? We, we wanted to surprise Madame. <laughs> Monsieur is out on bail and he is waiting for Madame at the Hong Kong's bar. <laughs> and you didn't tell me anything? <laughs> so now, <laughs> quick, quick, go, get me a taxi, now go on, hurry up. You're both mad. You let me go on talking, you really are mad. Or am I going mad? What did he do? Uh, five minutes before Madame came in. Oh, but you should have told me. And this cold tea, I will never be able to wait for Solange to get back. What did he say? Uh, what I've just told you, he was very calm. Oh, right, he always is. He'd be utterly unconcerned if you were condemned to death. The man's unique. What else did he say? Um, nothing. That he was going out. <sighs> Anyone leave police headquarters at midnight? Do just as warm as late as that? And sometimes much later. Much later? And how do you know that? I read through detective. I know these things. <laughs> oh, you do? <laughs> you really are an odd little girl, Claire. She might hurry. Uh, you won't forget to have the lining of my coat sewn. I'll take it to the farrier tomorrow. <clears throat> Uh, what about the accounts? Um, the day's accounts. Let me see them. I've got time. Solange attends to them. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I'm all in at that. I'll look at them tomorrow. Oh. But that, that alarm clock? What's that doing here? Where does it come from? Um, the alarm clock is the kitchen clock. Oh, it is. <laughs> I've never seen it before. It belongs on the shelf. It's always been there. That's right. <laughs> that I'm something of a stranger in the kitchen. <laughs> you're at home there. It's your domain. You're its sovereigns. But I wonder why you brought it in here. Uh, it was Solange for the cleaning. She'd never dare trust the big clock. How odd. How odd. She's certainly taking her time. You can find taxis at every street corner. And what about you? You fool. Will you be beautiful enough to receive him? No wrinkles? Huh? 
It's been such a long separation. It will be like a thousand years. Let's see now. Gay? Wistful? Idiot. You idiot. <laughs> there I go talking to myself. Happiness makes me giddy. And so long is not back yet. All oh, those flowers. Oh, those girls do worship me, but they haven't dusted the dressing table. Their housekeeping is the most extraordinary combination of luxury and filth. I'm raving, Claire. My mind is wandering, forgive me. Today's been too dreadful. Is it madame satisfied with our work? Oh, but I am, Claire. Delighted. In seventh heaven. Madame's making fun of us. Oh, stop nagging me. After what I've been through today, I've got a right to be out of sorts. In the first place, there is the business of the letters to the police. I wonder who could have sent them. I suppose you wouldn't have any idea. That's what I mean. I don't mean anything. I'd like to know, that's all. I've been groping around the whole day long as if I were blind. I felt like the police hunting in the bushes for a girl's corpse. But that's all over with, Monsieur is free. Thank heavens. Which still doesn't account for those letters. What can she be doing? She's been gone an hour. Why didn't you tell me the one that Monsieur had phoned? He would be furious. We were terribly afraid of alarming them, of giving her a shock. Oh, that was very bright. <laughs> You're quietly killing me with flowers and kindness. One fine day I'll be found dead beneath the roses. Claire! What do you think of this quadrure? Do you like it? If I might venture. <laughs> <laughs> if you might venture. Well, venture. What do you think of it? If I might be so bold as to make a suggestion, Madame's hair would look fluffier, worn over the forehead. Are you sure? <laughs> You're right. <laughs> you are a bright girl, Claire. You know, Claire, I've always thought you had a great deal of taste and that you were meant for better things. I'm not complaining. Yes, I know, I know, but after all, you are more sensitive than the others. I realize that it's not much fun living with them. Fortunately, you're with your sister, your uh, family, but with a bit of luck, you could. Uh, if I had wanted to. Well, I don't doubt it. Listen, listen, a cup, it's her. Madame must drink it because of the cold. Oh, you're trying to kill me with your tea and your flowers and your suggestions. No, you're too much for me, Claire. I've never felt so alive. Oh, a set in the best tea set. The very best set. Such pomp, such elegance. You <laughs> must, must drink it, otherwise. Well, oh, Madame is still here. Did you get the taxi? Um, I looked everywhere. No one wanted to come on this thing as this. <laughs> the taxi is there. It's waiting for you. Let's hurry. So it's understood. You're to go upstairs and to bed. And tomorrow morning we'll just sleep and sleep and sleep. Claire, come and close the door behind me. And you're not to touch it. Are you done a fun job? And you sneered at me. Don't. I tried so hard not to say it, but I couldn't help myself. Even she drank it. Ah, uh, obviously. It was to be expected. Where are you going? To sleep. Claire. Claire, I'm calling you. Who cares? Claire, come here. Do you hear me? Come here. What do you want me to do? The tea was ready. I put in the pills. She wouldn't drink it. And so you think that we're just going to sit here and shake? I'll be back tomorrow, back! Drunk probably, and vicious like conquerors! They will know where the letters came from. They... Oh, I hate her. I hate her. I loathe her. And you just stand there. Her joy! Have you seen her? Huh? How happy she was! How disgustingly happy she was! Her joy feeds on our shame. 
Her carnation is the red of our shame. The red of her dress is the red of our shame. Her furs! Ah, she took her furs. And you just stand there. You don't scream. Are you there? What do you want me to do? She got away from us. You came back too soon. She gets away. You just stand there. What do you want me to do, huh? Do you want me to make a scene? Do you want me to make a scene? Ah! Answer. Well, answer. We've got time. We've got all night. Let's get on with it. Keep your apron on. It's my turn. Doesn't matter. Here. My turn to be madame. Take it. Do you think I still have some rouge on? Rouge? Yes, there's some rouge on, but you're not rouge. You're all made up. And that's what she said. That's all over. Forced to wear this. At this time, I want to be a real maid. Put out the light. You don't want us to... to organize things in the dark? Do as I say. Oh. Uh, Solange, mm. let's wait a little while. She left in such a hurry. When one is in such a hurry, they always forget their bag or money or... <laughs> Where are you? Oh, please, Solange. She left in such a hurry. It's a trap. Madame suspects something. Mm. What, for instance? She is suspicious. We're being watched. <laughs> We're beyond that, Claire. Please, Solange, you're not listening to me. I can feel it. I can feel something in this room. I assure you she will be back. She would have forgotten her compact or handkerchief or God knows what. I assure you I can feel something in this room that can record our gestures and play them back. Remember Madame said not to latch the front door? Claire, you're raving. I'm not. <laughs> please, wait, please. Suppose, uh, at least, uh, at, at least, suppose we said a prayer. Do you dare bring God into, huh? To the holy. The mother of God into the ceremony. Oh, you've got more nerve than I thought. You have no shame. He's not so loud. The walls are thin. Claire, it's God who's listening to us. And you know that it's for him that the last act is to be performed. But we must inform when him. We'll play to the hilt. Oh, please, not so loud. <sighs> Go, put on your white dress. Then I'll do that. Do as you like, it makes no difference. <laughs> but hurry up, hurry up. Oh, ah, let's drop the preliminaries and get on with it. Hurry up, hurry up. We've long since we stopped needing the twists and the turns and the lies. Oh, let's get right into the transformation. Hurry up, hurry up. I can't stand the humiliation and shame any longer. Who cares if the world listens to us and smiles at us and shrugs its shoulders and says that I'm crazy and envious. I'm quivering. I'm shuddering with pleasure, Claire. I'm going to win you with joy. Hey, begin. <laughs> ah, you're beautiful. Skip that. We said we we're skipping the prelude. Start the insult. I'll never be able to. You dazzle me. Start the insults. Let them come. Let them unfurl. Let them drown me. For as you well know, I love servants. They do not belong to human race. Servants ooze. They are foul effluvium drifting through our rooms and hallways. They are entering, corrupting us. I vomit you. Getting there and getting there. I know you're necessary. Like scavengers and grave diggers and policemen are necessary. Nevertheless, 
they are a putrid lot. Go on, go on. Oh, your frightened, guilty faces. Your puckered elbows. Your outmoded clothes. Your wasted bodies only good for our cast-offs. Your our distorting mirrors. Our lonesome vent. Our shame. Our dregs. Oh, go on, go on. Oh, hurry up. I can't go on.
At last, Madame, <laughs> Madame is dead, laid out on the linoleum, strangled by the dishcloths. What? Oh, Madame may remain seated. Madame may call me Mademoiselle Solange. Yes, it's for what I've done. Madame et Monsieur may call me Mademoiselle Solange Le Mercier. Oh, Madame should have taken off that black dress. It's grotesque. So now, I'm reduced to wear mourning for my maid. As I left the cemetery, all the servants of the neighborhood marched past me as if I were a member of the family. I've so often been a member of the family. Yes, we'll see the joke through till the bitter end. <laughs> what? Oh, Madame needn't feel sorry for me. I'm Madame's equal and I hold my head high. Ah, oh, and there are things Monsieur doesn't realize. He doesn't know that he used to obey our orders. <laughs> Monsieur was a tiny little boy. Monsieur told the line when we threatened. No, Inspector, no. No, I won't talk. I won't say a word about our complicity in this murder. The dresses, oh, Madame could have kept them. My sister and I had our own, the ones we used to put on at night in secret. Now I have my own dress and I'm your equal. I wear the red garb of criminals. Monsieur is laughing at me? Monsieur is smiling at me. Monsieur thinks servants should have better taste than to make gestures reserved for Madame. Monsieur really forgives me? Oh, Monsieur is the soul of kindness. He would like to vie with me in grandeur, but I scaled the fiercest heights. Madame will get over her fright. She will get over it soon enough. What? <laughs> with her jewels and perfumes and flowers and powders and lovers? As for me, I'm my sister. Yes, I dare speak of these things. There's nothing I wouldn't dare. And who could silence me? Who? Who would be so bold as to say to me, my dear child, I've been a servant. Well and good. I've done gestures servants must make. I smiled at Madame. I bent down to make the bed, bent down to scrub the tires, bent down to peel the vegetables, to listen at doors, to glue my eye to the keyhole. But now I stand upright and firm. I'm the strangler. Mademoiselle Solange Le Mercier, the one who strangled her sister. Maybe still, oh, Madame is delicate, really. But I pity Madame. I pity her satin skin, her little wrists, her little ears. What? Oh, I'm the black row? Uh oh, I have my judges. I belong to the police. Claire, she was really very fond of Madame. Your dress is again. And that white dress, that one, which I forbade her to put on. The one you wore the night of the opera ball. Madame will remember, Madame will remember uh, when she poked fun at her because she was sitting in the kitchen admiring a photo of Gary Cooper. Madame will remember the gentle irony, the, the maternal grace with which she took the magazine from us and smiled. No, Madame will forget that she called her clarinet. <laughs> Monsieur laughed until the tears roll down his cheeks. <laughs> no, 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 Inspector, no, no. I won't say anything in their presence. It's our business. It would be a fine thing if masters could pierce the shadows where their servants live. That, my child, is our darkness. Ours! <sighs> Anything. Just tell yourself that this time Solange has gone through with it. You see her dressed in red. She's going out, going out down to the great stairways, accompanied by the police. 
out on your balcony to see her making her way among the shadowy petty dunes. Oh, it's noon. She's carrying a nine pound torch. The hangman follows behind. He's whispering sweet nothings in her ear. Claire, the hangman is by my side. Oh, take your hands off my waist. He's trying to kiss me. Let go of me. <laughs> the hangman is struggling with me. She will be led in procession by all the maids and all the servants who accompanied Claire to her final resting place. They'll all be wearing banners, streamers, flowers, crowns. They'll toll the bell. The funeral will unfold its pomp. It's beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> First come the butlers in full livery, but without silk lining. They're wearing their crowns. Then come the footmen and the lackeys in knee breeches and white stockings. They're wearing their crowns. And then come the valleys and the chambermaids wearing our colors. Then the, the porters and then come the delegation from heaven. And then leading them. Oh, the hangman is loving me. I'm being acclaimed. I'm pale and I'm about to die. And those flowers, they gave her such a beautiful funeral. Oh, my poor little to the word of the Alphas, the word you touch only with tongues. Now we are Mademoiselle Solange La Mercier, the famous queen. Oh. And after all, as you needn't feel uneasy with me, I'm not a maid. I have a noble soul. No, not a word more, my dear fellow. Madame will not forget what I've done for her. No, Madame mustn't forget my devotion. And despite my forbidding it, Madame goes on strolling about the apartment. Will she please sit down and listen to me? Oh, we are raving. You're talking far too much, my child. Far too much. Shut the window. Close the curtain. Very well, Claire. <coughs> it's late. Everyone's in bed. We are playing an idiotic game. Claire, <coughs> pour me a cup of tea. Yeah. I said a cup of tea. You're dead tired. We need to stop. Oh, by no means, my poor servant girl. You thought you can get out of it as easily as that? It would be too simple to conspire with the wind to make night once accomplished. Solange, you'll contain me within you. Now do as I say. Okay. Listen, I made up my mind. I'm ready. I'll help you. Your task is to keep me from backing out. Nothing more. What more do you want? We have an end. We're at the very beginning. I'll be coming. Forget about them. We're alone in the world. Nothing exists but the altar where one of the maids is about to immolate herself. Okay. Vista, it's your task, yours alone, to keep us both alive. You have to be very strong. In prison, no one will know that I'm there with you secretly on the sly. I'll never be able. Stand up. Good luck. Ah, you're all overwhelming me. Claire, darling, stand up. Get up, pull yourself together. Claire, I beg of you. Darling, stand up. Please. Stand up, up on your paws, up on your paws. You don't understand the danger. That's a lot. You are immortal. Now repeat after me. 
Madam must have her tea. Oh, I've just been. Madame must have her tea. No, I won't. You bitch! Repeat! Madame will have her tea. Madame will have her tea because she must sleep. Because she must sleep. And I must stay awake. And I must stay awake. Don't interrupt again. Are you listening? Are you obeying? I repeat, my tea. I said my tea. But madame. Very well, continue. But madame, it's cold. I'll drink it anyway. Let me have it. And you served it in the best, the finest tea set. that they wear in secret. 